So hi everyone. So today I'm going to talk about the Minitel, the PAMAL group work, and media archaeological art. First, thank you so much Enrico for inviting us and Jonathan Hogg for organizing everything with us in such a caring fashion. So let's go. Okay, so PAMAL. PAMAL is an acronym. It means Preservation and Art Media Archaeology Lab. PAMAL was found in uh, uh, 2013 by Lionel Broix and Emmanuel Guez. First, it was a research unit in an art school in France, in Avignon. And then in, 1990, in 2019, it, it became an independent artist collective and was renamed PAMAL Group. We're now six members, Lionel Broix, who's an artist, Emmanuel Guez, who's an artist, Stéphane Bizet, who's an engineer, Morgan Stricot, who's a conserver, restorator of digital arts at the ZKM, Armand Dinchal, who's an artist, and recently myself, who's an artist too. So you can see here some shelves from the former lab of the PAMAL group when it was based in Avignon. Now we're based mostly in Orléans in France and also uh, scattered around France and Europe since Morgan is in Germany. So you see on our labs there is a lot of computer equipment and mostly old machines. Uh, many Minitels and even our masterpiece, the pet Commodore, which we love, which is very impressive when you open the hood. And you can also see the orange phone there. Actually, it's called a Tic Tac. It was born in 1974. And the idea of this machine is to acoustically couple voice frequency from telephone with a box full of electronics, a phone line, and a television screen to display the result of the transmission of information uh, sound information onto a computer screen. So it's like the ancestor of all the Minitel thing I will explain to you later. Okay, so what is PAMAL? PAMAL Group creates its own work from digital artworks that have disappeared. Disappeared or been badly damaged, mainly due to the obsolescence of computer software and electronic hardware. We work to see and we seek to make sensitive the vulnerability and the fragility of an art, the digital art, that is so strongly dependent on industrial logics. All the works that the PAMA group reconstructs as close as possible to the original materiality and temporality, sometimes in an incomplete way, are considered archives. We focus on the effect of mach machine obsolescence on art and culture with this particular emphasis on digital artwork preservation and creation from these artwork archives. So what is Minitel? Minitel, the acronym stands for Medium, medium Interactive par Numérisation d'Information Téléphonique. You needed a little French in the conference. So in English it means interactive medium by digitalizing telephone information. Uh, it was a French invention of a passive computer terminal consisting of a keyboard and a nine-inch nine inch, nails, no, screens uh, that uh, was devoid of any processing capacity of st or storage. You see it. You see it over there. Um, so the. Um, the Minitel was connected to a French service, uh, Videotex Teletel, and it was in use from uh, 1980 to uh, 20, 20, 2012. Actually, it was uh, full of services that could be accessed from a phone line thanks to a built-in modem uh, that had a download speed of uh, 12, uh, 1,200 bytes per second and an upload speed of 75 bits per second. Uh, the Minitel was itself equipped with T-plugs so that it could plug into uh, the French telecom telephone network. On the, um, the screen, you can see some example of services over there. After that, you see artworks on the Minitel, but those are like actual services that you could access when it was uh, up and working. Uh, so uh, for the color Minitel, the, actually the screen is a text matrix of 25 lines and 40 columns in the video text mode. And most Minitel are black and white, so they have eight shades of gray for this black and white version. It works with a set of graphic characters that are each composed of six bytes and make it possible to display image in such a tile style. So users, we, when we were younger, uh, had to call a short four-digit number 
the 36, 15 plus, blah, blah, blah. And we accessed the service when we heard the dial tone that was so cute and then pressed connection to access the page. So this concept was also commercialized in other countries like Brazil with a video texto, Alextel in Quebec and Bild text in Germany. <laughs> it should be noted that Minitel is not kind of an internet ancestor like we hear so many times. Actually, both were at the same time in parallel between the 80s and the 90s. So Minitel has been down in, see, in, since 10 years now because it was down in uh, 2012. Um, okay, so today I will present you the PAMA Group research on reconstruction of artworks made with the Minitel. You can see one there in the middle of the pieces during one of the workshops. Then I will present you the global thematics network that the PAMA Group has recreated, enabling people to contemplate today those artworks that were created back then and in between inaccessible since it died. Um, I must specify that there are many famous artists that have worked with Minitel at the time, so it became uh, an, an art medium like uh, each time a new medium comes up, some artist uh, takes it and make art with it. So it happened with the Minitel too. Like for example, Daniel Buren, Orlan, Edouard Docac, Angelette Chia, John Cage also, Vera Molnar and Christian Prigent. Here you can see a work by Daniel Buren on the Minitel. And there even was a magazine called Art Access, founded in 1986 by Orlan and Frédéric de Velay that uh, were promoting artworks made for the Minitel. Here is a Madonna by Orlan. You can see the dot matrix. Okay, now I will present you two artworks by the PAMA group that are dedicated to telematic art. Uh, one is PTT, Profound Telematic, uh, uh, Profound telematic Time, and the other one is uh, 3615 Love, which uh, you will be able to experience tonight on the container on the other side of the camp. So, Profound Telematic Time, that you can see here, is an installation created for the exhibition Réseau Monde that was commissioned by Marianne Breyer and Olivier Zetoun, and that took place very recently from February 23 to April 25 at the Centre Georges Pompidou in Paris. Uh, it was, uh, we had like um, a series in the Centre Georges Pompidou, a series of great exhibitions about uh, digital art and culture and uh, this is uh, Réseau Monde was the last uh, exhibition of this series. So here is profound telematic time at the Centre Georges Pompidou. A technical medium never dies, but it is reconfigured by the new. The installation profound telematic time is a media archaeology work made from disappeared telematic artworks. As I said before, the Minitel network was closed in France in 1912. So, most of the telematic works created during the 80s for, for example, cult exhibitions of digital arts and culture, like Electra, Les Immateriaux, have disappeared. The PAMA group has reconstructed some of this work in a media archaeological way, which means with the original software and hardware. In the installation PTT, these works appear with the gaps links, linked to their incomplete reconstruction. As archives of seemingly past times, they become the artistic medium of another work of art that gives them a second life while preserving their temporal depth. Uh, PTT is uh, made of three metal shelves with three levels on each, and on each shelf are placed three archive objects a Minitel, one or two old computers, and or a cardboard archive containing the documentation of a work or of the networks. Thus, uh, the installation comprises of 20, 27 objects. As you can see on the pictures, only the Minitels are switched on. They are connected to the PAMA Group Wipitel telematic server that I will explain later if I don't talk too much right now, so I need to be fast. When entering the rooms, the visitors see only the back of the first shelf 
Um, it was really beautiful when you discovered it was kind of obscure and then you got in and you saw all the back of the Minitails and the Arduino and all the cables and the LEDs. It was like an organism. It was pretty mysterious and when we went around you saw like all the face and the depth with the depth of the three shelves and the Minitel gives a special rhythm because uh, the image appear on the screen really slowly like that line by line and so they were like kind of responding to one another. And so to access the, arch the archive installed on the Minitel or the two other shelves, the, the visitor must look through the shelf or through two of them. So it's kind of like, this is the idea of the depth that I was talking about uh, earlier. So it's kind of looking through the depths of telematic history. The deepest shelf, the third one, which is only visible from the back or through the transparency, contains an archive of the Electro exhibition um, as co by Jacques-Elie Chabert and Camille Philibert, I'll get back to later. The second shelf, the intermediate one, presents an archive of uh, video text poems by Edouard Ocac from 1984. I will also get back to that in detail later. And the third, the most visible, presents an archive of uh, the exhibition Les Immatériaux at the Centre Georges Pompidou in 1985, which is called L'Objet Perdu by Camille, uh, Jacques-Elie Chabert and Camille Philibert. This is our cartel that we put up in every exhibition and that is also over there in the container and saying, dear visitor, due to the natural cycle of machines, some elements of the artwork could be out of order. So this possibility is part of the work. It's not like a fail for us. So 3615 love. Um, 3615 Love is an installation based on archives of old and recent telematic artworks. For that purpose, uh, the PAMA group has reconstructed the works of Jacqueline Chabert and Camille Philibert, L'Objet Perdu from 1985, and also the work Videotext poem, uh, Poems from 1985-86 by Edouard Ocac. Uh, the work also hosts a more recent piece that was made by the artist Marie Molin, QR code in, uh, in 2018. The sustainability of the works produced for the Minitel depends on s many things. First, the, the preservation of uh, devices that were made by a disappeared industry, such as La Radio Technique or Alcatel, which are respectively closed since uh, 2002 and 2016, but also of the network, which was abandoned in 2012. The integrity of the Minitel terminal is fully uh, preserved, but they become rare and more and more rare to get a hold of. Um, 3650 Love have been exposed in many different places uh, over the years and each time its shape is slightly different. Here it was in 1919 at Réseaux Sociaux at Here it was in Slovenia, in Ljubljana in, uh, in May of 20, 2020. And here you can see the last one on the big picture with the yellow wall. It was in Dancing Poland in uh, October 2021. And then other pics of uh, Fondation Vasarely uh, for the Gamers Festival in Aix-en-Provence or in Amsterdam in 1919. And finally, 3615 Love here at EMF. And you see where we are on the map so that you can visit us later at, 19, at 7 o'clock, that's it, 7 o'clock tonight. Okay, so um, reconstructing a minital based artwork. What does it consist of? So to explain to you what we do when we reconstruct uh, such a work, I uh, will take the example of uh, the work the PAMA group did on video text poem by uh, Edouard Ocac. So in uh, 2014, at the Second Nature Arts Center in Aix-en-Provence, during the PAMA group exhibition called Une Archéologie des Médias, was presented the first reconstruction of Edouard Ocac video text poem, which was a telematic artwork from 1985. Telematic means with minital hardware, video tech software, and teletel network. So, 
Uh, this artwork was shown on the Brazilian Minitel network, which was called Video Texto. Here you can see uh, the public terminals that they had in Brazil. Of course, they have all disappeared, but uh, here what it looked like. So the idea, the PAMA Group goal was restoring the original experience of Eduardo Cac's video text poem. This meant reconstructing an archive of the original work. The PAMA Group um, archive that they reconstruct is called a second original, which is different from the artwork. So what do we need for a reconstruction? At first, we need a color minitel for this special work because it's colored. Okay, so in this care, in this case, it's the only hardware that is able to display the work. Nevertheless, such an object is very rare. A color minitel is really harder to find than the black and white ones that were like for general public. Uh, the color minitels were only for professionals. Um, so we need to get hold. Uh, a hand on one of those terminals. Then we need a video text programming console. That's what you see on the screen. So what we're used to program the graphics. Unfortunately, they all have almost all disappeared. Uh, the PAMA group uh, bought one recently, but we haven't tasted it yet so far. So you'll see we use another process to reconstruct the artworks. And third, we need a network. Okay. Reconstruction of Eduardo Cac. Oh my God, no color minitel, no console, no network. Damn. We were in trouble. But it was not the, first prob the only problem, just the first one, because we, have, we had a second problem about the artwork itself. Actually, the only remaining traces of the video text po uh, poems were a slide that were made during the Brazil High Tech Exhibition in 1986. And a QuickTime animation created from those slides for archival purposes. The QuickTime animation was proved to be a good basis for work despite, despite some incon inconsistencies. Um, for example, the, uh, the animation uh, used colors that was not the colors in the minital scale, um, they used characters impossible to display, etc. But actually, uh, well, it looked hopeless, but uh, they went on whatsoever. And uh, the re reconstruction consisted of two stages. Uh, first, the uh, reconstruction of the artworks code and the reconstruction of the network, as I said earlier. Um, okay, so reconstructing the artworks code. Um, as you can see there on the slide, uh, I really love this picture because uh, there is everything on it. Um, actually, the slide that I was talking about uh, earlier, they existed, but uh, the group only had access to photos of the slide. You can see them printed on the sheet of paper. Well, yeah, this is where you look at, not there. So this paper there, you can see the printout of the slides. So actually, um, the reconstruction consisted on uh, reconstructing all the images by hand and then placing themselves at the lowest level of digital programming hardware, uh, which was like at the bit level. This is the media archaeological point of view. So therefore, they edited the video text frames for, with an hexadecimal editor. Well, I might show you in the end if I still have time. So that meant translating the animation into hexadecimal code in order to transmit them to the Minitel. And they did that with grids and encoding tables, and uh, that's how they reconstructed all the image. The reconstruction was supposed to be like the original frame character by character, byte by byte, according to a manual transcription of the images on the frame. So you can see it there. These are the charts for the coding of the, the, um, the characters. So once the frames have been edited, well, the Minitel displays the animation of the video text poems. You can see on the screen. So re bracadabra. I'm not too good with... Uh, with uh, Portuguese, Tessao and 
Rickhouse and Deus. So, in order to be as close as possible to the Brazilian experience, the Pama group rejected the idea of looping um, and scrolling of the four animation. So, they created an additional, an additional welcome screen that you can see there on the slide, enabling the spectator to choose uh, which poem they wanted to see with a Minitel keyboard. So, uh, he, the spectator finds the original sensations of a spectator of the Minitel from back then, interacting with the terminal itself. So here we are at Le Palais de Tokyo for the exhibition Vision in 1915, where the PAMAL showed the reconstructed archive of the videotext poems. Okay, so I'll make a little interlude and take you to Warsaw. Emmanuel Guest was there a few years ago for a conference. He went for a walk to think about his talk and he came across this. It was a very good restaurant. He says very good Litu Lithuanian cold soup, so we will believe it on, on parole. So Warsaw was completely destroyed, as you know, during Second World War. And after the war, it was rebuilt, especially from Canaletto paintings. Look at this house sign. It indicates two dates. The date of the construction of the original building that was destroyed and the date of reconstruction. We are searching to do the same and asking the same thing for digital artwork and their preservation and reconstruction. Now look at this. These are the video text poem showed at the Whitechapel Gallery in London in 1916 presented on a great website for internet art, Rhizome, and finally purchased by the Tate London in 2018 and the MoMA in New York in 1919. The label indicates the artwork dates back to 1985, but this is wrong. In parallel with Pamal research and reconstruction of his work, Eduardo Kak proposed the reinterpretation of the videotext poem. In practice, the Minitel Expo that you see here is an empty shell into which a tablet PC has been inserted, showing the video produced by the PAMA. The hull is from a black and white Minitel 2 model, which is not even a color one. <laughs> the brightness and brilliance of the screen, the color and the absence of flicker typical to cathode ray tubes betray that it's a tablet and does not correspond in any way to what the viewer can see with the PAMA second original reconstruction. So, from an aesthetic, historical, and technical point of view, media technical point of view, this is a reinterpretation of the 1985 artwork according to variable media theory and not a restoration. In fact, MoMA has purchased, has purchased an artwork from 1916, from 2016. Okay, so back to PAMAL group work. So, this is another work by the PAMA group. Uh, it's L'Objet Perdu, which is a minute artwork by Camille Philibert and Jacqueline Chabert. L'Objet Perdu was presented at the exhibition Les Immateriaux at the Centre Georges Pompidou in 85. And uh, it's a multiple choice telematic novel. It consisted of uh, 250 screens, but everything was lost but a, ser a serigraphy print. Um, so I'll go a little further than I thought. Uh, the idea was to show you another way of uh, reconstruction, like this time, not from videos or slide, but from serigraphy prints. And here is the reconstructed uh, second original. I showed at Cerisi La Salle by the Pamal Group. So I just like those two. Okay, um, I'll go fast with that. So for, for the physical, uh, interaction that I was talking earlier, uh, the PAMA group developed a software called Arbo Maker. Um, it helps to design the tree structure of a Minitel service and it allows us to create a home page, descending and ascending link, and then, then it generates a final JSON file. So, the network. This is our stuff. So, we have the great joy today, the great pleasure, the great honor to present the Weepy Tail. It's up there in the container. 
as we said before, the Minitel network is down. So the PAMAL have reconstructed a network for the Minitel. Here, uh, okay, so this is a quick schematic of uh, how it worked before. And this is what we put up for today. So this is our WPTEL server. Here you have the schematics for the for the online version, but here on the container over there is the local version, so you just erase the three we, we, we sign on the middle, but actually it's kind of the same, so we have a server running, and why do we run a server? We could just put the files on the Arduino and plug it right to the Minitel, but no, actually the thing is, as I told you at the beginning, uh, the transmission of data for Minitel was made by sound, so our network uh, preserve this, and so as Yonel sent me in a text message two days ago when I said, tell me again about the server, he said, just tell them that with our server, the Minitel sings. I just love that, so I repeat the message from Yonel. Hi, Yonel. So that's the idea. Actually, with the WPTEL, uh, uh, we, can, we could connect like 50 Minitels to, uh, to the server, and all the, the WPTEL boxes demodulates the signal and send them to the Minitel. So the reconstruction is complete. We have, as we said first, the terminal, so the hardware, we have all the software environment, and we have the network. So there was like the translation of data into sound. It's kind of a couple of technical information, but it's in French, so <laughs> whatever. Okay, and here is a socket, the magical socket, where we plug our Minitel into the WPTEL into the Minitel, and that's where the data modulation gets in and makes the Minitel thing. So here it is, the WPTEL server with a little screen showing what's happening on the Raspberry Pi there. So. Uh, for all this uh, reconstruction works, um, the Minitel developed a series of software um, like uh, MiEdit, which is a software developed by Frédéric Brisson, uh, aka Zigazoo, and uh, PAMAL uh, participated in making another version. And actually, uh, it's the hexadecimal editors that I was talking earlier at the beginning. That's what helps us make uh, the graphics, since we don't have the programming console yet. Um, and also, there are some software that you can see over there that, has, uh, that are developed into the processing environments, like transforming some JPEGs into VDTs that we can work on uh, for Videodex images. So you can check that out on the PAMA website. And if you have any question or anything, just uh, contact us, like on this email over there. And my computer says Friday, 4:28, but we're one hour different from France, so it's Friday 3.28, so I think I'm quite on time. 